Welcome to GMA's Budget Preparation for Small Cities webcast. I'm Pam Helton, Director of Consulting Services at GMA, and I would like to take the next 20 minutes or so to review the budget process with you. This webcast is not intended to cover all aspects of budgeting, but we will cover most of the budget requirements relative to small cities. So let's get started. First, let's define what a budget is. It's a legal document that serves as a financial plan for a fiscal year. It's a plan listing your proposed expenditures with a means of paying for them with anticipated revenues. Let's review some state requirements. Either by ordinance or resolution, cities must establish a fiscal year, and this is usually found in the Charter. State law also requires the adoption of a balanced budget for the city's general fund, your special revenue funds, which is comprised of your hotel motel tax fund, your confiscated assets fund, your 911 fund, or even some grant funds. And also for your debt service funds. These would be your general obligation um, bond funds or your revenue bond fund and your capital projects funds. And your, um, this requires a project length balance budget as well. And this is where you'll find most of your SPLOSC funds. Although it's not required by law, cities are encouraged to adopt an annual budget for your other funds, which are proprietary or your enterprise funds. Examples of this would be your water sewer fund, your electric utility fund, um, natural gas fund, telecommunications, airport, solid waste, etc. Having a budget for your enterprise funds will help in determining if the city is recovering the cost to provide the service. Enterprise funds should make money and hopefully each fiscal year with a surplus at the end you can use that to fund a reserve account for making system improvements. Each fund requires its own financial accounting system. A fund can have multiple sources of revenue and multiple departments. You kind of think of it like a checking account. And your accounting classifications and descriptions used in your funds must follow the uniform chart of accounts. This is state law, and I hope by now everyone is using the uniform chart of accounts. It provides a uniform format for our local government financial reporting and accounting. The Uniform Chart of Accounts is compliant with GAAP, which is the generally accepted accounting principles that governs government accounting. The account classifications and descriptions used in your accounting system will also be used in your budget in appropriating funds for each line item. This is the Uniform Chart of Account Manual found on DCA's website. I hope that you will print this publication and review it and be sure that your accounting system is set up according to the uniform chart of accounts. Most revenue and expenditure account classifications from the uniform chart of accounts that are used in your accounting system will also be used for budgeting. So cleaning up your accounting system will make the budgeting process much easier. Georgia law provides that the minimum level of a control is at the department level, but governments can adopt policies specifying control at a more detailed level. A budget summary document um, is reported at the department level with an expanded budget account list within each department attached to the summary. So at the minimum level of control, the council needs only to approve changes in the department total budget and not in each line item. Who prepares the budget? A budget officer is usually specified in the city's charter or ordinance. If it's not found there, the governing authority may appoint a budget officer. And if there is no budget officer, the governing authority shall perform the duties of a budget officer. Check your city charter and see who is specified as the budget officer. 
and if it has changed, you may want to consider updating the city's ordinance or charter to reflect current practice. So where do I start? Develop a budget policy and have the policy adopted by the mayor and council. Your policy may include um, your budget calendar, um, your budget development and review process, the process for amending the budget. It could address a reserve policy, a contingency, and even a debt policy. If you have a budget policy, be sure to review and follow the policy throughout your budget process. Addressing some of these items in a policy will allow for consistency in the budget each year. Now let's discuss the budget preparation process. Hopefully your accounting software can provide historical data to use as a guide for making budget projections. And be realistic with your budget amounts and take into consideration any outside factors that may affect the budget, such as the cost of gasoline, the cost of natural gas, and assess your community needs. Perhaps you've had some citizen requests made throughout the year that you need to take into consideration as you prepare your budget. And review your comprehensive plan. Look at the goals listed in the comprehensive plan. And evaluate the internal operation and needs of each department. You may want to prioritize or rank items or, and projects according to their importance. So if budget cuts are needed, then you will know which ones to eliminate first. It's important to engage department heads and staff in the, in the budget preparation process. They can provide input on upcoming projects, events, changes in regulations, um, which may have an effect on their departmental budget. Department heads can use a budget worksheet or some type of budget expense request form to submit with their de department request. For those of you who have police departments, property and money received under seizure and forfeiture during the fiscal year must be accounted for and the information must be submitted with the city's budget to the Carl Vincent Institute of Government. And I have included the website to go to to submit the information. Provide supporting information and justifications for any increase or decrease in revenues and expenditures. Include footnotes or supplemental information if needed, explaining what is included in each account classification. It's better to have as much information as possible available about the figures which comprise the budget. Here's a sample of a budget worksheet showing your historical data from the year before and the actual year to date and the current budget and the year to date of the current year. And then you have your column for the proposed budget. This is just a sample from a general fund revenue, um, the tax portion of the revenue budget. Here's a sample of a worksheet. It can be um, from a general fund expenditure. Um, this is just for the highway and street division department. So it just gives some information, same information with a column to input the information for the proposed budget. I like this sample budget worksheet because it has the column for the notes, as well as giving the variance from the prior year budget to the current. Once you've had a chance to compile all the information and you've gone through that internal process, the proposed budget can be submitted to the council. You will need to make the proposed budget available to the public and you may even want to place it on the city's website. There are some requirements to the, in the law for the final review and adoption process. A public hearing on the proposed budget must be held at least a week prior to the council meeting where the budget is going to be scheduled for adoption. 
The notice of the time and the place of the public hearing shall be placed in the newspaper of general circulation in an ad or news article, not in your legal section, and it must be there at least one week prior to the public hearing. The notice of the availability of the proposed budget and the public hearing notice may be combined into one publication. The governing authority may have more than one public hearing before adopting the budget, so you may end up changing the budget based on the input at the public hearing. So the final adopted budget may not be the same as the proposed budget that was previously submitted to council, and that's okay. The budget must be adopted by resolution or ordinance at a public meeting where the notice of the adoption was placed in the newspaper at least one week prior to the meeting. The public meeting notice may also be included with the public hearing notice. So the easiest way to meet all of the notification requirements is to combine them into one notice to submit to your newspaper. Here is a sample um, notice. We're and I got the information on where they, the where the budget is available, where the public hearing will be held, and when, as well as the meeting date and time of when the proposed budget is scheduled to be adopted. Here is a sample resolution used to adopt the budget, and then I've given another. Um, a sample that just is, gives some more detailed information in the resolution. I wanted to show you this um, budget from the City of Pooler because I like the way that they have listed all of their funds at the top. So they have all the summary information from each of their funds all on one sheet. So I just wanted you to look at that. Here is a five-year uh, history uh, proposed SPLOS funds of their SPLOS funds, showing their revenue and what the SPLOS funds will be used for each year. Unless it's otherwise provided by the charter or local law, any increase in the appropriation at the legal level of control of the local government whether it's accomplished through a change in anticipated revenue or through the transfer of appropriations among departments shall require a budget amendment approval by resolution or ordinance. So if the department total increases during the budget year, a budget amendment must be submitted to council for approval. Transfers of appropriations within any fund below the local government's legal level of control shall require only the approval of the budget officer unless it's otherwise de designated by council. So the budget officer can change amounts of the line item within the same department unless the council has adopted a policy otherwise. So if I'm going to be over budget in my police fuel line item account listing, and I have funds available in the police professional services line item, then I can move funds without a budget amendment resolution or ordinance. I would just keep a note of the changes that I make because you'll need those for your auditor. And remember, spending more money than the budget allows is a violation of the law. Here is a sample um, resolution to amend the budget. And I've provided just a shorter version of a resolution to amend the budget. I wanted to go over the um, what's required of your adopted budget as well. Local government budgets which total one million dollars in expenditures must be submitted, must submit a copy of their budget to the Carl Vincent Institute of Government within 30 days of adoption. And I've included a link to the website where you would download the information. Throughout the year, 
I hope you will monitor your revenue and expense items to determine if a budget amendment will be needed. You can run a monthly detailed financial report by account classification to prove for any errors in classification coding. Placing transactions into the correct line item account is crucial to the success of the budget. Prepare monthly budget reports for your mayor and council and review it with them. Prepare the reports for the department heads and review it with them as well. You may want to consider scheduling a mid-year budget workshop or even a year-end budget review. Either of these GMA can assist, so just give us a call. This is a sample budget report for the general fund on, on the expenditures for the function of executive. You have your total budget amount, your actual expenses year to date, and then the variance showing if you are under budget or over budget. This is a perfect example of a report that is compliant with the uniform chart of accounts. Now let's talk about um, the audit requirements. Cities with a population of 1,500 or 300,000 in annual expenditures require an annual audit. Cities under 1,500 in population or under 300,000 in annual expenditures require a biannual audit or an annual report of agreed upon procedures with the Department of Community Affairs. So you can do either or or. You must provide a copy of your audit within 180 days of the end of your fiscal year to the Department of Audits. And you must upload a copy of your audit to the Carl Benson Institute of Government website. I've included a budget checklist for the next two slides that may help you as you're in your budget preparation process. Please review these to see if um, they can be used in helping you in your budget preparation process. This checklist has to do with the meeting schedule, the notification requirements, etc. And then I've provided a sample budget notice calendar. It's just given the dates to help you with submitting the information to the newspaper and having your budgets available to the public and having the uh, citizens aware of where and when the public hearing will be held as well as when the budget will be adopted. So where do we go for help? Well, the budget laws from the state of Georgia are found in Title 36, Chapter 81. You'll find all the information on budgets and audits for local governments in this section. So what about some other budget resources? You can visit the Georgia Department of Audits website and find out some information on budgets and audits and GMA's handbook for mayors and council members. We have a chapter on budgets as well as revenue administration. And GMA also has a publication on its website, um, a budget guide for Georgia municipalities. And this publication provides a wealth of information and gives a lot of samples and budget calendars, et cetera, that you can use in your budget preparation process. You can also um, find some information on Carl Vincent Institute of Government's website. They have a compliance auditing in Georgia counties and municipalities publication. It's a great resource for you. It provides a lot of good information. Um, so I hope you'll take the time to review that publication. If you're looking for some sample financial policies, um, the Georgia Government Finance Officers Association is a good place to start. And the Governmental Finance Officers Association has some sample financial policies as well. The Department of Community Affairs is the place to go for the Uniform Chart of Accounts. I hope you'll um, review the information on the website and make sure that your accounting system is in compliance with the Uniform Chart of Account listings.
This concludes the presentation on budget preparation. I hope that you have found the information to be informative and useful. And as always, if you need additional information or have questions or comments, please feel free to contact me at any time. Thank you.